بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فيقول المصنف رحمه الله تعالى باب ما جاء أن القلوة في قبور الصالحين يسيرها أو ثانا تعبد من دون الله باب ما جاء أن القلوة في قبور الصالحين يصيرها أوثانا تعبد من دون الله لأثر الشيء محمد ابن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى he mentioned the chapter which is titled the clarification of that which has come from the fact that going to extremes or transgressing the boundaries, the limits, with regards to the graves of the righteous, it turns those graves into idols that are worshipped besides Allah. Going to extremes, transgressing the limits that have been legislated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to the righteous and the graves of the righteous, in reality, the outcome of this extremism is that it turns those graves and... Uh, Sometimes those righteous individuals or what they are considered to be righteous individuals, it turns those graves to idols that are worshipped besides Allah. Those graves are turned into idols that are worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever the people go to extreme with regards to them and they transgress the limits. And we've seen the previous chapters leading to this chapter, the author he has clarified the prohibition of going to extremes in the deen in general. Ya ahl al-kitabi la taghlu fi deenikum. O people of the book, do not go to extremes or transgress the limits in your deen. And this was addressed, or this this statement, this verse is addressed to the people of the book, but it is a warning for this ummah not to be like them. And we have seen the outcome of extremism and going into extremes and transgressing the limits with regards to the righteous specifically and from the prophets the first and the leaders of the righteous والسلام, and after them likewise from the upright and, and pious believers going to extremes with them is a means to, that leads to shirk and causes their graves to be worshipped and we have seen likewise the prophet وسلم, he has prohibited building on the graves for this reason and that it's not permissible to build on the graves and uh, and it's not permissible to worship uh, at the at the graveyard and at the place where the graves are and there's a stern prohibition with regards to that and now the author is clarifying why why is there a stern, a stern prohibition why is this prohibited? Why was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioning these prohibitions in such, a, in, in such a stern manner all the way in his life, his entire life as a Prophet, he's warning from this affair. And also just before he died by five days Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he continued to warn from this affair, building on top of the, building masajid and taking the graves as places of worship all the way to his last breaths. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He's warning from this affair Why? What is the, what is the, what is the reason for this great concern? Uh, the author is clarifying now That going to extremes in this manner with the graves It leads to major shirk And it turns those graves It causes those graves to become Awthan Any idols that are worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al awthan is the plural of wathan and al wathan is something that is worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma yu'badu min dunillah laysa lahu surah but it doesn't have a particular form there's a difference between al wathan wa sanam al wathan wal awthan wa sanam wal asnam al wathan is something that is worshipped that is worshipped besides Allah azza wa jalla but it doesn't have a particular image like a, a rock or a stone that's not carved or like a tree, for example, or like a grave. Even some people, they worship walls or pillars and that likes like this. And it's something that is taken as an object of worship, something that is an idol and is worshiped besides Allah Azza wa Jal, but it, it's not carved into a particular form or or it's not shaped in a particular shape. This is called a wethan. From that, the grave. 
uh, the, the graves that are worshipped besides Allah. These are these are considered authentic. As for something that is worshipped besides Allah Azza wa Jalla and it has a particular image and has been shaped in a particular form, then this is called a sanam. And both of them, they are idols. Both of them, they are falsehood. No matter what the image is or, what are, or, or, no, or no matter what the object is, these things are falsehood and they are not worthy of worship. And we have seen previously, likewise, in the chapters that have preceded that the one who is worthy of worship, he is the creator. The one who is worthy of worship alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is al-khaliq. And everything besides him is makhluq. Nam is makhluq wa marbub is his creation and is sustained and provided by him. Therefore, nothing is worthy of worship except for him, the creator, al-rab, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point in this chapter is to clarify that the reason for the stern prohibition, the reason for the Prophet وسلم, cursing those previous nations because of, for building masajid and taking the graves of their prophets and the righteous amongst them as places of worship is because this leads to major shirk. This, this leads to that grave being worshipped besides Allah and it turns that grave into an idol that is worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The author, he says, رَوَى مَالِكٌ فِي الْمَوَطَّةِ أَنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالَ أَلَهُمَّ لَا تَجِعَ الْقَبَرِ وَثَنًا يُعْبَدُ اشْتَدَّ غَضَبُ اللَّهِ عَلَى قَوْمٍ اتَّخَذُ قُبُورَ أَنْبِيَائِهِمْ مَسَاجِدٍ The author, he mentioned a narration that is in Al-Mawattah by Al-Imam Malik, رحمه الله تعالى, Al-Imam Malik ibn Anas, Malik ibn Anas, نعم, he's from the Atba' Tabi'een, رحمه الله تعالى, and he is the great Imam, Al Imam Malik, the Imam of Al Madhab Al Maliki, uh, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, and he died in the year 179. Al Imam Malik ibn Anas Al Asbahi, Al Asbahi, uh, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, and he is Imam Dar Al Hijrah, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he died in the year 179. Great, great scholar of hadith and scholar of fiqh, and from the Salaf of this Ummah. Rahmatullahi alayhi. He has a very famous work and book of hadith. And also inside of that book of hadith, al muwatta he included as well narrations from the Sahaba and the Tabi'een. And likewise, he mentioned in that book much of his fiqh and understanding and commentary that he has and uh, rulings that he has derived from the narrations he mentioned. Rahimahullah ta'ala. He mentioned this narration in the muwatta and he said that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, O oh Allah, do not make my grave an idol that is worshipped. O oh Allah, do not make my grave an idol that is worshipped. And the anger of Allah it, it has become severe upon the people who take the graves of their prophets as masajid. The ulama, they mentioned that this hadith is mursal, which is a type of hadith that is weak, but it has... But it has other narrations that support it. And uh, this meaning has come in other narrations that are authentic. And uh, therefore, this narration likewise could be considered authentic from this aspect. And the meanings that are established in this narration are correct. And the Prophet wasallam, whenever he was uh, dying, we have seen that he cursed the Jews and the Christians for the them taking the places uh, the, the the for them taking the the graves of their prophets as places of worship and these narrations are authentic and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was mentioning that to warn his ummah from doing that with his grave and he was afraid that that would happen to his grave and this is why he supplicated and he asked allah to not allow his grave to be taken as a place of worship to be taken as a place of worship. And his supplication was responded to Walillah al-Hamd. And even in the earliest of days, the people of knowledge and the people in charge in uh, the time uh, after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they built walls around the grave, three different walls in different angles, and pro protecting the grave so that no one can go directly to the grave and worship there. 
it's not possible for someone to make it to the grave directly and to worship there. So therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he answered the the supplication of the Prophet and his grave is not taken as a place of worship. Walillahi alhamd. As for those people who try to reach the grave or they go to his masjid and they call on him, then this is established and this is known. Even people calling on him here, but this worship is not happening at his grave because his grave has been protected and there is not a way to get to it. The layman and the people cannot make it directly to the grave to worship there. Therefore, his supplication, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was answered. As for what occurs in the hearts of, of the people, then this is what happens in the hearts of those misguided people, that they call on him or, or they worship him or they seek refuge with him or they ask him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is major shirk, but this is not happening at his grave. This is not happening at his grave, and his grave is not taken as a place of worship, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Walillahi alhamd. So in any case, we see that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he supplicated to Allah and he asked Allah and from his supplications that he would ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that his grave would not be taken as an idol worship besides besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he warned, likewise, the anger of Allah has been is uh, severe, is severe and increased and he, upon the people who take the graves of their prophets as masajid. The author, he then mentions, he says, What Ibn Jaririn bi sanadihi an Sufyan an Mansur an Mujahid Afara'aytum ullata wal uzza qala kana yaluttu lahum as sawiq What Ibn Jarir? Ibn Jarir, his name is Abu Jafar Muhammad Ibn Jarir al-Tabari Rahimahullahu ta'ala He died in the year 310 Ibn Jarir is the great scholar of Tafsir and he has one of the most beneficial uh, books of Tafsir and it is approximately 26 volumes and he is from the first of the ulama to collect Tafsir by riwayah and by narration and he is from the narrators of Hadith and this is what is indicated here in the statement of the author Wadi Ibn Jarir in Bisanadihi and uh, it's narrated by Ibn Jarir with his chain, with his chain, meaning with his chain of, of narration, with his chain of narration. So Ibn Jarir, he's from the scholars of Tafsir, and he's from the scholars of Hadith, and his methodology in Tafsir is that he will mention the understanding uh, of the particular verse, and then after that he will mention those who have that understanding, and he will mention that by way of narration narration to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to the companions and to the Tabi'een and this is a great uh, great great tafsir and very beneficial Muhammad ibn Jarir al-Tabari Abu Ja'far Rahimahullahu Ta'ala likewise he was from al-Fuqaha al al-Mushtahideen he was from the scholars who were not blind following and he was from the scholars who were considered Mujtahideen and they were those who had uh, madhahib similar like Imam Malik that has preceded and likewise before him Abu Hanifa and, uh, and after him Shafi'i wa Ahmed they're from the scholars and mujtahidun those who strive uh, with knowledge and understanding and looking into the text to derive rulings and the like cite this from them Muhammad ibn Jarir al-Tabari and he had a madhahib and the people were following his way rahmatullahi alayhi and uh, he was from the last uh, of those great great scholars in that manner but he says rahimahullah with his chain to Sufyan Sufyan uh, Sufyan ibn Sa'id al-Thawri rahimahullah ta'ala he died in the year 161 likewise a great scholar of hadith and he's also known as Amir al-Mu'minina fil hadith Abu Abdullah Sufyan al-Thawri Amir al-Mu'minina fil hadith rahimahullah ta'ala and he says an Mansur ibn and Mansur, and Mansur, this is Ibn Mu'tamir, rahimahullah ta'ala, he died in the year 132, likewise from the greatest of the ulama of hadith, and Mujahidin, and Mujahid ibn, ibn Jabr, he died in the year 104, he died in the year 104, and he's from the students of Ibn Abbasin, radiallahu anhumma, Mujahid ibn Jabr, he mentioned that he read the Quran to Ibn Abbas more than one time, stopping him at every verse asking him the understanding and the meaning of that verse mujahid is from the greatest of the scholars of tafsir from the tabi'een rahimahullah ta'ala here he's mentioning with regards to the statement of allah have you not seen allat wal uzza 
Have you not seen Allah wal Uzza? He's mentioning the interpretation of this verse. He says, Qala kana yalutu lahum as -suiq. Kana yalutu lahum as -suiq. Famata fa'aqafu ala qabrihi. That, this is in reference to Lat specifically. He says, Mujahid rahimahullah, that Lat and La if ara'aytum Lat wal Uzza, Lat, this one, he used to yalutu lahum as -suiq. Yalutu lahum an yakhlutu. Uh, that he used to mix uh, the, the sawiq he would make with uh, the dates and also with some fat like butter and, and the likes uh, this he would mix it together and he would feed it to the pilgrims and he would feed it to the people who would pass by him and he was known for generosity in this manner and he died and then after that they started to stay and worship at his grave they started to worship at his grave. And so this verse here, Have you not seen Alat? It is known that Alat, this was from the major from the major idols of the Mushrikeen in the days of Jahiliyyah. And if they had Alat, and they had Uzza, and they had Manat, and there were others likewise, but these were from the major, the major idols. Uh, they had many idols, and then they had the, 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 their, their big idols, or the major idols, and then they had others, other idols likewise. But these were the, from the greatest of the idols that the Mushrikun, in the time of Jahiliyyah, they used to worship, and this was known to them. And Lat is one of them. Where did Lat, how, how, what was the beginning of Lat, and how did it be, this become an idol that is worshipped besides Allah? Mujahid is saying that Alat, this comes from the, the verb Latta Yaluttu. Latta Yaluttu means to, to mix something. To mix, to mix something. This person, he used to mix a type of food, they call it Sawiq. So he would mix it together and he would prepare it for the people. And then when somebody would pass by him, he would give it to them for free. He would give it to them for free. And likewise, in the times of of Hajj, even though they were making Hajj, but it was based upon Shirk and they had corrupted it. They had corrupted it. They would still come. The Arabs would still come. And he would prepare the Sawiq and he would give it for free as a charity for anybody who would pass by him. Uh, for anybody who would pass by him. So he was known for piety and in this manner he was known for being generous he was known for uh, any in, in his society in that time he was there he was considered to be from the people of, of righteousness and in his society and he used to be generous and whenever he died they took his grave as a place of worship they took his grave as a place of worship كَذَا قَالَ أَبُوْ الْجَوْزَاءِ عَنْ إِبْنَ عَبَاسٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمَا كَانَ يَلُتُّ السَّوِيقَ لِلْحَاجِ Likewise, also, the author, he says, it has been narrated from Abu Jawza. Abu Jawza, likewise, from the Tabi'in, he died in the year 83. He says it's been that he narrated from Ibn Abbas, anhuma, Ibn Abbas, the great, the great scholar of Tafsir, rather. And likewise, the, the, from the family and the nephew of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abu Abbas, he died in the year 68. What is uh, he say? And uh, he is known as Turjuman al Quran. And uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made du'a for him. He said for he made du'a to for to Allah for Ibn Abbas. Allahumma faqihu fi din wa alimhu at ta'wil. O oh Allah, grant him understanding in the deen and teach him the interpretation of the Quran. And this is why Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma is known as Habrul Ummah, the great scholar of this Ummah, wa Turjuman al Quran, and the interpreter of the Quran. And he is from the most knowledgeable of the companions with regards to the interpretation of the Quran. So he says, Kana yalutu sawiq al hajj. Lat, he is the one who used to mix the sawiq for the people who make hajj. Likewise, it's come in one wording of this narration for yut imu. فَيُطْعِمُ مَنْ يَمُرُّ مِنَ النَّاسِ فَلَمَّا مَا تَعَبَدُوهُ وَقَالُوا هُوَ اللَّهِ So likewise he used to feed the people who would pass by him and whenever he died they started to worship him and they said he is اللَّهِ and اللَّهِ is in فَعِلْ مَنْ لَدَّهِ اللَّهِ the one who mixes the sawiq the point of this clarification and the benefit from this is to see how this great great idol and with regards to the Arab in those days, this was from the greatest of their idols that they used to venerate and love and honor and worship and, and seek refuge with and, and the likes like this. They worship besides Allah. Allah. What is the origin of this of this idol? How did it begin? And the origin, he was a righteous man. 
righteous man. He used to mix the food like this, and he was in, 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 in their eyes, in, in their eyes, in, this, in his society, they considered him to be a righteous person, a person of salah because of his generosity and how he would prepare all this food, and then he would give it away for free, and he was known for that, and he was known for that. So in, amongst his society, he was considered to be a righteous individual. And uh, then uh, whenever he died, they started to worship at his grave. And they made a a or a And he meaning that they would go to his grave and they would stay there and they would remain there until the extent that the grave uh, was worshipped and besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is clear evidence for what the author he is mentioning. And this is also clearly from the reasons why the Prophet Sallallahu was so stern in this prohibition. Because this affair leads to shirk. It leads directly to shirk. Whether it's from the fastest means. And from the fastest, fastest paths and ways that lead to major shirk. Uh, is to establish worship at a grave. Or to build on top of a grave buildings or domes and the likes like this. And then in this manner, that graves be, that graves become venerated. And that grave becomes, uh, the grave in that site becomes uh, having uh, the in the hearts of the people magnification and the likes like this, until that place is taken uh, as a place of worship and an idol, and it's worship besides Allah Azza wa Jalla. The author he says, وعن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال لعن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم زائرات القبور ومتخذين عليها المساجد والسرج رواه أهل السنن Likewise it has been narrated from Abdullah ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما that he said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he cursed the women who visit the graves the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he cursed the women who visit the graves and likewise he cursed those who take the graves as places of worship and they put candles and lights and lanterns and they illuminate the graveyards with lights. Rawahu al Sunan, the, the people of the Sun of Sunan, yani meaning Abu Dawood wa Tirmidhi wa An Nasai wa Bimaja. They narrated this narration. They narrated this narration. Uh Rahimahumullahu Ta'ala and Ahl Sunan, that's what this means. Now, so we see here that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he cursed these people. There's three different people here, and he cursed the women who visit the graves, and he cursed the individuals who take the graves as places of worship, and he cursed those who illuminate the graveyards with lights, with, with lanterns or candles, or even today if they have lights and that are there, and, and lights, and electricity. All of this is prohibited, and taking the graveyards in this manner as places of worship or lighting them up and, and with candles, or lighting them up with lanterns, or lighting them up with any type of lights. This is all impermissible. Rather, the Prophet ﷺ cursed them. Likewise, women visiting the graveyards. This is impermissible. And the, and the Prophet ﷺ, he cursed them. Naam, la ana Rasulullah. Naam, the, the Prophet, he cursed these individuals. Meaning, that means that the Prophet, he made dua against them that Allah will not show them mercy. Because, al-la'natu hiya al-ib'adu an rahmatillah. Al-ib'ad an Rahmatillah. It is to make dua and la'na. The curse of Allah Azza wa Jal is that one would be taken far in distance, far away from the mercy of Allah. And to make dua against somebody like this, meaning may Allah's anger be upon them. Because if they are taken away from His mercy, then His anger will befall them. So this is a supplication against that individual. Who was making the supplication? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Against who? Against women. Against the women who visit the graves, and likewise against individuals who take the take the graveyards as places of worship, or the graves as places of worship. Uh, not saying not those who worship the graves, but rather they, those who just take the graves as masajid, as has proceeded, and likewise cursed. He cursed Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam those individuals who light up the graveyards, light them up with with candles, or light them up with. Tor with torches or with lanterns or light them up with electricity likewise all of this is impermissible all of this is considered and them uh, lighting up uh, the graveyard lighting up the graveyard so therefore it's not permissible for uh, to do any of these affairs it's haram for the women to visit the graves it's haram to take the masajid or uh, excuse me to take the graves as masajid or places of worship and it's haram to light up the graveyards and it's haram to write to light up the graveyards all of these are means for the grave 
uh, to be worshipped. And if they're taken as a place of worship, then this is a means that leads for the grave itself to be taken uh, as an object of worship. And likewise, by lighting up the graveyards, and uh, this is also a means and lighting up the graves with 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 candles and the likes, of, with, with lamps or lanterns and the likes like this. This is all means that leads to venerating and honoring the graves in in in, in going to extremes. No doubt, a Muslim he respects the graves and he is not allowed to sit on them and he's not allowed to 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 walk on them and the likes like this. But this is a, this is the legislated type of honor that and respect that is uh, permissible. But as for going to extremes with that honor and that respect, then this is a means that leads to worshiping the grave besides Allah Azza wa Jal. And for this reason, these affairs have been made impermissible. The author, he says, Fihi misa'id, if he had the verb. In this chapter, there are some issues, any benefits, issues, issues and benefits that are derived from here. Al-Ula, tafsir al the first, uh, the first benefit or mas'ala is the, de is the definition or the interpretation of awthan, we see it, and it's something that is worshipped besides Allah, that does not have a particular image, like a grave, nam, or a tree, or a stone, that is not carved, and the likes like this. Athania tafsir al-ibadah, and the, the second benefit, we see the interpretation of ibadah, and, uh, and ibadah yani, is that one will surrender himself, and one will submit himself, and one will uh, love and worship uh, the one whom he is worshipping with humiliation, and with with love. Nam al-ibadah ghayatu al-hubbi ma'a ghayati al-dhulli wal khudu' So the state of a, of a person in ibadah is that he humbles himself and he surrenders himself out of love and he uh, worships in this manner. Al-thalitha annahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lam yasta'idh illa mimma yakhafu wuku'uhu the third benefit is that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he did not seek refuge with Allah. Yani, Allahumma la taj'al qabri wathan an yu'bad. Oh Allah, do not make my grave a uh, an idol that is worshipped uh, beside you. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he did not seek refuge with Allah from this, except it was something that he was afraid that it would happen. So the reason why he sought refuge with Allah and he asked Allah for this to not 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 to happen is because he was afraid that it would happen. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Rabia, qarnuhu bihaa. Uh, and the fact that he also coupled along with this or he mentioned together along with this the fact that the graves of the prophets before have been taken as masajid and that those people are cursed and he mentioned this and, he, and then he mentioned his affair as well and he, oh Allah do not make my grave like this and then he mentioned the anger of Allah upon those who did that before and likewise he mentioned the curse of Allah that upon those who have done that before so he is warning from that sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-khamisa dhikru shiddati al-ghadabi min Allah and uh, the fifth mas'ala is the mention here that uh, this is the severe anger of Allah for those who do that the severe anger of Allah for those who take the the graves as places of worship as the author mentioned in the previous chapter, then how about if he worshipped them? And he, how about if he actually worshipped the grave? If this severe anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is upon the one who takes the grave as a place of worship, then how about the one who worships the grave itself? The sixth one, and it's from the most important of them, the author, he says, And this is to know the description of the worship of Lat and that it is the the greatest of the the idols, the greatest of the idols, and how it became uh, to be worshipped. How did the worship of Lat become? And yeah, the the Lat, which is the great the greatest of the idols that was worshipped besides Allah How did this occur? And this was a man in the origin. This man, he, this was an individual. He used to be known for generosity in his society, and they considered him to be righteous. And whenever he died, they took his grave as a place of worship. And then, in the end, he his grave became worshipped besides him, and he was known as Lat. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Knowledge is light, my dear brothers and sisters. If we see uh, what had occurred in the previous nations, and we see. And we look into the evidences of Tawheed, we see the strangeness of Islam today and how far many of the Muslims are away from the true deen. May Allah guide us and guide them and show us the truth and allow us to follow it. The seventh mas'ala is to know now and then 
that the, at that it was the grave of a righteous man. And he in there and considered righteous to them. Now considered righteous to them. And this is how it occurred. That was the grave at that which became the greatest from the greatest idols of the Arabs in those days. That is worshipped besides Allah Azza wa Jal. Its origin that it was a grave of a righteous man. It was a grave of a righteous man. Athamina anahu ismu sahib al qabr. And the eighth masala is that it's that's the name of the person in the grave. And also remembering that knowing the name or the meaning of that name. Yani Alat. Alat Yani Aladi Kana Yalutu Asawik Lil Hujaj. The one who used to mix mix any Alat means to mix something. Alata Yalutu. Nam and 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 Alat, he's the one who did that, and that was the name of that idol, and that was the name of that person, and he was known for he was known as that Alat, the one who mixes this, the the sawik, he mixes this type of food for the people and gives it to them as a charity, and and then whenever he died, they remembered him and they took his grave as a place of worship, and then in the end, his grave became worship besides Allah until he became from the major idols of the Arab in those days. At Tasia. لعنت الزوارات القبور number nine المسألة التاسعة cursing the curse of Allah upon the women who visit the graves at Ashira this is clear it's not permissible for the women to visit the graves this is something that a believer will submit to male and female and he, a male he will not allow his women to go to the graves if they wish to do do that or they ask to do that or they want to do that rather he will, they will be reminded and upon a believer to submit upon a believer to submit whenever we find the evidences in the Quran and the Sunnah a believer he follows them and a believer he follows them he surrenders to them hoping for the reward from Allah and fearing his punishment the fact that the Prophet وسلم, cursed the women who visit the graves and the tenth Mas'ala, the author he mentioned is that he cursed likewise the ones who put lights on the graves as well. And uh, all of this we see is in order to prohibit uh, the means of shirk. Because that which, because shirk is from the worst of all sins, whether it is the greatest of all sins. In Allah, la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yashab. That Allah, He does not forgive that a shirk is made with Him, that idols are worshipped besides Him, or that associate that there, there's uh, one would associate partners in worth worship with Allah. But he, but he forgives lesser than that to whom He wills. So therefore, whenever this crime and, and this sin of shirk is, is so dangerous, likewise all of the means and, av and avenues that lead to it, likewise they are blocked and they are stopped and they, they are made impermissible. And rather there is a stern prohibition with regards to these affairs. And with that we finish the chapter. Walillahi alhamd. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.